Hello, everyone. I am joined by Jay and Aluminum for uh, the White Box Reviews. <laughs> this was brought up during our last uh, White Box thing during Gen Con. The Gen Con one, I mean. Uh, so, hello, Jay. Hello. Hello, okay. Aluminum. What's up, Bra Bros? Welcome to another Bra Mithra review video. Today, we're going to be talking about white boxes and putting them on a scale. Are we unwhite boxing? <laughs> Is that what we're doing? So, yeah, we make had sure this. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that bell, and subscribe for future content. And make sure you like Bra's Roblox tutorial videos. Oh, no. How did you know about my Roblox tutorial videos? <laughs> You're a YouTuber. That's how they make money. Man. That's that is. But yeah, I got I got this question a lot recently. I don't know. It's I got asked this on multiple live streams, and I've noticed this question in like Lantern's Rain coming up, come like once in a while, asking about white white boxes. But bra, what is a white box? Well, um, it's hard to Creation. describe. <laughs> I don't know how to describe a white box. I guess a white box would be the content that is, well, here's how I've classified this for how we're going to talk about it for these for this video. We are not going to be uh, including the brown boxes, which are just usually miniature releases that don't have game content. Those are usually called brown boxes. Uh, also, brown boxes are also... Beta, I think, comes in brown boxes from time to time. Sometimes it comes in unique box, like a yellow or red one or whatever. But uh, the white boxes seem to be, for the most part, not always, uh, individual mini releases or a pair of mini miniatures that include game content that is not considered beta or promo. Basically... Today, for white box content, we're going to stick to white box releases or ex like small expansion releases that have been released. Usually, these come with a painter scale mini or they come with a couple cards. Um, so, this can be things like the 10th anniversary survivors, echoes of death, uh, like white speaker, some holiday releases um, like Santa Satan or Oktoberfest um, Aya. And yeah. So, for our review of this content today, we've split these boxes into um, kind of two categories, and one is the below thirty-one dollars United States dollars um, kind of boxes, and the other is the above thirty-one USD boxes. And uh, yeah, so I guess we'll talk about some of them. We will. Uh, there are three. <laughs> caveats that we need to talk about uh caveat one is a real simple one the giga line is not in this list right that is just an What's expansion a of death? that's not a that's not a white box it's a vignette of death so there's one it, we are not going to be talking about the giga line two uh the pinup collections we're not going to be talking about those either not that they're not white boxes. They're they are. They're just a thing of themselves, pretty much. It's the same with any set, in my opinion. Because I know at Gen Con this year they also had like a a white box collection, as Illumina mentioned. I think there was like a a fade Percival collection. No, it was a white speaker. There was there was some collection of white boxes. So we're not gonna talk about those either. The third caveat to this list is the, um, well, <laughs> the legendary card pack itself. Um, someone else wanted to try to explain the caveat attached to the legendary card pack. What, the fact that there were some white boxes included in it? Yes. Uh, yeah, so, uh, the original... White speaker, I believe, her wares for sale, as well as the original Twilight, Alice in the Twilight Night, I think, right, uh, cool. which included a dormant Twilight cloak and blue lantern, 
tell me if I miss. Oh, and um, half of uh, it was just beyond the wall. Uh, so half of uh, OG Aya, uh, uh, or rather, it was Aya beyond the wall, which was the hard breastplate and the uh, cloth leggings. They, those three were included in 1.6 card pack, but not with the 1.6 box. Correct. Am I missing yeah. any? There yeah, was. It uh, also black... it also included the pinups of death to content. So that was the um, dark yeah. seamstress settlement event, as well as the four uh, kind of lingerie, I guess, gear cards, and then the um, uh, Christmas Nico holiday. White speaker Nico settlement event. Sorry, in the snow. Correct. Ah, yes, those two. So there are five to six white boxes included in that. So those are very old white boxes, likely to not be printed again. Likely, maybe Allison, but either way, uh, I would highly recommend if you don't have the, even if you have one point six and you're looking to get some of this white box gear, I would highly suggest you just buy that card pack. Uh, it's much cheaper than trying to buy those old white boxes third party. Uh, even if it's just for the white speaker cult knife, it's worth it. Yes. So those are the caveats uh, that are worth mentioning, but everything else we will now talk about. So, as was already mentioned, we divided all the current white boxes into two groups that are below 31 US dollars and above 31 US dollars. So, we will start with the below 31 US dollars, and we will be going in alphabetical order. This is not a ranking. We will start with the 10th anniversary white speaker, which is the reprint of the original white speaker. So, 10th Anniversary White Speaker has the Story of Blood secret fighting art along with the plot twist strain card. Now, this, it, isn't, it isn't strictly a, uh, a reprint, though. It is not. A, it's yes. an update. It's an, well, yeah, it's like... It, it is like the that. same... It's, oh, no, it's not. Which one is the same she? White Speaker. It's, it's, it's uh, Koshka, but... Yes. Um... Uh, like she's older. Yes. Ten is she older, older or is it just like a touch up like Satan twins? No, she's older because that was like the whole kind of idea of the tenth anniversary is like it was okay. like them ten years um later. Uh, later, yeah. So I I mean I guess white speakers it's really a discussion about like how do white speakers age, but like okay. the miniature oh. is much different from the original white speaker. Correct. Thing, right? So she is a white box that was be under $31. She included her one miniature, which is, again, yes, it's a different sculpt. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool looking. I think it's actually the larger sculpt range as well, or the miniature size. These are the, these are the new size, the gambler's chest yeah. size. She is of that. Um, so the plot twist strain is neat. Um... It's just the, the the strain cards. I don't know what the future of strain cards will be, but these white boxes use these strain cards. So we're just going to explain the rules real quick on this one time, and then from then on forward, we're not going to re-explain the rules. But basically, strain cards are like achievement hunting is the best way you can do this. You need, you you They're constantly in all your campaigns. They have a milestone condition, and when you reach the condition... It will permanently add something to all campaigns moving forward, and then the strain milestone card itself is then removed and never used again. So that is how strain milestones work. For this one specifically, because we don't want to spend all this time on this, it spend it starts the story of blood, which is a fighting art, a strain fighting art, which is the best way to describe this would be the prototype or the preview of knowledge cards. Anybody? Yeah, I think it was specifically made to like tease the idea of knowledge cards. Um, in retrospect, it kind of makes me wish it was a knowledge card because um, it would just, you know, yeah, fit. I mean, you can just you can just do that. Yeah, would be would be cool if this was a knowledge card, but these are 
Basically, these are evolving fighting arts, I think is what they were actually called. I don't have the rules here, but I think they were called evolving fighting arts. Um, but this is a pretty powerful one. So this has four stages to it, which, yeah, this reads exactly like a knowledge, where it just says story of blood and then one, two, three, and four, exactly like we now know what knowledges are. They have observations exactly like knowledges. You track them like knowledges. These are basically knowledge cards. <laughs> Um, this one is just, uh, what's the final one? Peel back monster skin, reveal a mass of blood in your likeness. It hangs in the air briefly before collapsing and washing the wasteland red. Spend an action to convert a bleeding token into scab armor. Add one to all locations. One armor to all locations. You may spend bleeding tokens in place of survival. And then observations. When you use this, you gain an observation. Which, uh, that's not what they're called now, right? What are they called now in Knowledges? Are they, still uh, they still are called Observations. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, and then these ones, this one has an ending one, which I think these are now called Risky. A dangerous um, something, I believe. They're called... Oh, man. It's been a while. Um revelations is what they're called uh when you got to the last uh... the last stage okay sorry you make observations then you get a revelation um, right at the very end of it yeah so i think i believe in gambler's chest they're called like dangerous revelations or yeah something like that yeah that's what these red ones are that's what this has and then when you do it six times you die or seven seven times you die so well, sometimes, sometimes uh, on a, if you max it out on a six, you roll a d10 on a six plus, you lose one observation. Otherwise, you die. Uh, this is interesting because this is maybe a dangerous observation, is what they're called. Sorry, I just yeah. look up the rule. But um, in regards to something that we're probably not going to talk very much about because it's kind of spoilery, but there are some knowledges from one of the philosophies. That are very deadly when you get observations from them in Gambler's Chest, but a way that was deadly. brought up to kind a way that was brought up to kind of like surpass them was by using the Green Charm. Um, well, green so that, Charm, Evermore, uh, Serial Code, but I won't go beyond that. So you could use that in this situation as well to uh, to like survive and keep Story of Blood for right. You go even further beyond yes yeah anyway sorry that was a little bit of a tangent no this is a this is one of the bigger ones we're probably going to talk about <laughs> uh this is this says includes a quite a bit so this includes four different fighting arts plus a strain plus a miniature uh i don't know if these will be reprinted again that's the thing with all these white boxes i guess we can just get that out of the way now there really is no way of telling if any of these things will be reprinted Besides for two that we kind of now know will be reprinted because Poots has said so. But other than that... I think we've gotten, like, when these originally came out on the actual 10th anniversary, they sold out pretty quickly, White Speaker and Survivors. Uh, but they did get a reprint. So I imagine, you know, they'll just kind of be on rotation. I think awesome. most of the newer white box content is kind of intended to continually be available versus, you know, just... I hope so being gone yeah I, I hope so too but content i would i would put this one on the uh i guess we should create a scale <laughs> i didn't thought about this prior but i guess we, we do a uh what is S here, F. here no like th this is i'm gonna put this on the likely this is a likely to see a reprint there's some on so we're oh. gonna go with do we think this will be a likely to be reprinted or never again because there are some that i don't think we'll ever see ever again <laughs> I think we'll see this one again. Yes. I think this will be a likely. Or alternatively, like, you know, we have seen in the past that white boxes have been reprinted and have, have had new content or new versions of content. So it's completely possible that a reprint of this would actually have these fighting arts replaced with a knowledge card set versus um, a fighting art set. Yes. I would be uh, not very happy about that because I don't like when they do that, but. It is what it is. But this is a this is a likely one. I don't know. This is a pretty good one. 
So uh, that is it's 10th gonna anniversary be white speaker. Yeah. Let's go to Alice in Twilight Night. This is the one that we mentioned. The Alice in Twilight Night is probably one of the most iconic Kingdom Death miniatures. <laughs> uh, I know it's way up. Yeah, she's really, she's really, how, when was, this was even before the game released, right? Yep. Yeah. This is OG. So, this is a really old one. Uh, this stuff is all included in the 1.6 card pack. But, her miniature is really cool. Uh, yeah. I like I it. I think it's. I think it shows its age quite hard. It's yeah. Nowhere near oh, as robust. Sure. As modern minis. Sure. Just and the scale. Bit. The scale is yeah. So sure. Small now. Okay. Yes, I agree with all those things. I still think her miniature was a good miniature. I liked her pose. I like her stoicness. I thought she was a cool miniature. If they do uh, like Kingdom Death archival remasters in the same way that they did for the uh, Forsaker, I think Allison would be like an excellent candidate for for that. I agree. Wasn't Forsaker, a straight up reprint. Uh, no, the quality was like way higher on that. Like the model was like the same pose and stuff like that, but it was completely retooled. Was it like larger? I actually don't know. I never, I never saw it in comparison to something else, but it, it just looks way better. I was like, I don't, I don't usually buy like releases that have no content, but that one, I was like, ooh. Yeah, no, I, I had maybe to... off topic, but yes. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, yeah. Kind of reeling it back, yeah. I think that Allison would be a good, a good. Uh, uh, yeah, I like her like, like being uh, reprinted, reprints. archival, remastered. But... Uh, I actually don't think this has a high likelihood of being reprinted. We're the, you're talking about the box itself, not Alice in the miniature. I think Alice in the miniature will see her again, but this specific white box, I don't think you'll ever see this again. Okay, fair enough. Because this stuff's all included in the 1.6 card pack, and I think maybe Allison might be in the vignette that's coming. The big, the Kill the Killenium. Yep. I think no, I think it's confirmed she is. Is it's um? It is not confirmed. Oh, have we not seen the, the fourth? We have not seen the fourth person. The Killenium Butcher has Aya, uh, Brave, and, Aya distracted, uh, yeah, and Brave. Well, I don't think it's distra- I don't think it is the librarian. I think her name is Forget. I think it's a different archivist. Anyway, so that is Alice in Twilight Night, the white box. I would that one's likely unlikely to be reprinted. Uh, I don't think you'll see that content ever again. If you want the game content, buy the 1.6 card pack. If you want the miniature, I'm sure we'll see Allison again somewhere else. So I'm giving that one a probably don't chase that down unless you really really want it on a third-party seller i wouldn't chase it the next we have uh before the wall this is the first one we can just do both of these well so th- this is the two-part white box that was called before the wall and beyond the wall uh that featured heavily aya in both of them so before the wall was the one that includes the vagabond armor set along with uh, something that does nothing, the White Dragon Gauntlets, and then it has the Tabard accessory uh, that enables you to use the Vagabond Armor set. And then... Be- I, I love the Vagabond Armor set, but the White Dragon Gauntlets make me upset. There's no way to craft them. They're... There locked will never to... be a way to craft them. <laughs> I am calling that. <laughs> They're locked to a location called Ivory Carver. Um, and then they have a... It doesn't even matter if you unlock them anyways because they have an affinity bonus that uses a special rule called Sideswipe, we'll which uh, does does nothing. I even asked about this recently to Taste, and Taste said, like, hoo, 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 you'll never know. And so, you know, it's been like, you know, 10 years since this model was released, and we still talked about what that single special rule does. So, and it, it will, well, like we saw. Oh, I actually, this is a GC spoiler, so I won't say that. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about the, with the, yes, that the, one weapon. White boxes that have rules that will never be seen are not uncommon. <laughs> actually, I think it's pretty uncommon. Nah, we'll we'll get I to pumpkin. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. 
Uh, but then we'll just quickly throw in Beyond the Wall here. Beyond the Wall was the second part of this that has uh, the other part of crafting the Vagabond armor set, which is the hard breastplate and the cloth leggings. The Beyond the Wall Aya part, those are the ones that are included in the 1.6 card pack update, legendary card pack update. Uh, that sculpt is also, I just do not like, well, which one is which here? Which is the one where she's against the wall? That's beyond the wall, right? Beyond the wall, yeah. All right, I I just do not like that mini at all. Well, that's the very that's the that's much older than like before the wall was made after beyond the wall. Yeah. So beyond wall is also one of like the OG minis. Mm -hmm. Uh, the base for that mini is not usable. It's bigger than the game grid, so I just do not like that one, even the mini itself. So, um, and that's okay. Yeah, I'm just saying so. Uh, I would not chase Beyond the Wall at all. I would rather just buy the 1.6. I don't think Beyond the Wall or Before the Wall will ever be reprinted. And I think the newer Aya stuff that we've gotten uh, are much better sculpts. I think the the I, I hope for the beta Aya, the Lantern Aya, I hope she gets a white box. So I think the That'd newer, if you want an Aya sculpt, I would say just wait for the better ones. Even the one that if you're going to get the Kill Lenny and Butcher, Aya will be in there too. So I, I think the newer Ayas are just much better. But that's just my opinion. some like cool stone face armor in that one or something. Uh, now for the big debate. The Vagabond armor set. Uh, yes, it's very neat. Um, I don't think it will ever be reprinted. Barbaric loses out again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one, I, I, it's very unlikely to ever be reprinted, but... I can understand the want to have a Vagabond armor set. Uh, it is cool. I don't even know how much this would go for on third party. Trying to track, trying to chase this one. When was the last time this was available? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Probably like 2017, 2018. Probably. That's when I purchased Vagabond, like our before the wall, I should say. So, um, yeah, probably around there. Yeah. That's when I uh, started my journey. I don't think this will ever be reprinted. No, it's it's dead. It's dead like hell. Yeah, so if you really, really want these, I guess you could chase it down, but um, I would suggest not. I also would say like this would be a good opportunity for like card pack. Like if we were able to like if we're gonna continue getting card packs, like adding these kind of gear cards that if they don't ever get reprinted like at least make them more available through you know pack yeah my appeal it's my appeal to team death um let me just put well now so now we go to the next one so the next one is fade uh fade is very likely to get a reprint almost confirmed i would say this is getting a reprint uh, this was said at Gen Con. This was also available at Gen Con. So I guess all these ones that I say will probably never be available again. I guess if you go to Gen Con, maybe there's a chance they'll have them there. I thought the ones available at Gen Con, like a lot of the older stuff that kind of was just there, was all stuff that they had kept in storage. Yes. In, uh, yeah, it was shit they found like under so the like, couch. That's uh, yep. Yeah, it's not like not like they just had it there. For yep. It's not like you're going to be able to go back to Gen Con and get more. Yep, I agree. Or whatever. I agree, but I'm just saying, I did not expect that, and they were there. Uh, I was able to pick up a Fade there this year, so it could possibly happen, but Fade will get a reprint. Uh, Fade herself is a very unique uh, sculpt. She's probably one of a kind. I don't think it's going to be, maybe, I mean, I don't know. How 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 many minis do you think we're ever going to get that are pregnant? True. Well, she's like post-pregnancy but that's true uh, yeah that's debatable no i think she has the the baby right in the sculpt even yeah but like she probably she has two babies maybe possible. anyway well because one's the mountain man and one's oh, the okay. oh my. all right we're just talking about the white boxes uh very unique so that is an aspect that's super cool uh i think it's neat that that's there's a mini like that and it's probably going to be one of a kind or very few and far between very rare. He's also just really cool. Yes, we will talk about was, this. Um, like you and I talked about 
white speakers and we brought up fade so that was that was nice to see that people kind of took more appreciation for for fade or her role in lore i guess post our discussion yep. about it um Being dead rip rip fade um nico is better girl <laughs> But yeah, the content of Fade, I, I love. Like, I love the, the hunt event, uh, regardless of it triggering Harvester or not. Um, and I, I love the gear cards, too. Like, actually, in a campaign that I'm playing right now, um, we had to roll off to choose whether I grabbed the Newborn or the Sword of Silence because it felt I felt so morally wrong not grabbing the Newborn, but I really wanted the Sword of Silence just because its stats are, like, pretty good early game. Um, I left the baby behind. Personally, I think the sort. Of, I think I, I'm not a big fan of the actual content of Fade. Uh, I think really? It's a little bit lackluster. Well, I like Fade. I like her. I like her story. And I like her many. And it's a cool concept. Uh, however, the newborn is boring, and the sort of silence is bad. Like, yeah, it's got good affinities. Okay, I'll give it that. It's. It gets outclassed by a lantern sword in every situation, in my opinion. White speaker's really good. White secret's really, really good, and I would argue it's necessary for a game completion. I'm uh, um, like lantern year three though, so like a lantern okay. sword a little bit out of my price range at the moment. Sure. Uh, yeah. uh, in which case, I raised you the scrap sword, which is really good. Uh, it's deadly. Uh, anyway, th this is very baffling design. Like, it gains sharp if you have five plus understanding, but you can never have white secret, so. Yeah. What's up? Uh, well, you could put it on someone who's already had those events. Sure, I guess. Um, what happens if you get it like Lantern Year 3? Well, when, uh, once someone else triggers I, it, then I, you put it on them. Yeah, it's not no, it's, if the it's... settlement has it, nobody can white speaker or white secret. Yeah, it's not cursed though. So you it's not cursed. It's it's not cursed. It is irreplaceable. Uh, yeah, it's you irreplaceable. Use, you could lose it, sure, but like, that's a self fulfilling prophecy. Yep. If it creates its own problem. Yep. I I, 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 I don't like the actual content here, and I would never see myself getting the sort of silence or the newborn. They're both boring. Um. But, like, again, Fade's cool enough to carry herself. She's the coolest, and I would love a version of her, like, as one of the, as a red witch with the, a super cool bow or something. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, not preggers. Well, um, we'll see. Fade's likely going to have reprint. So. Sure, but it, it won't be, like, in her prime Fade. Sure. It'll just be the Fade mini. Sure. Well, we don't have to speculate on what the reprints will be. <laughs> well, that's that's a reprint. That's not a different mini. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. So I I would not chase this down on third party stuff. I no, think it's, no. I think it's cool, but I think it's going to get a reprint, and I think we'll probably see similar stuff. I don't know if we'll see the newborn and stuff. Maybe we will. I think Sword of Silence will make a return in the reprint and stuff. But uh, as far as my... this goes. One of my favorite aspects of this is that it has a basic hunt event card because we don't get many extras of those, and I just I love anything. That That's I true. Like, uh, more diversity to the, the hunt phase. So, yeah. yep. Next, we have uh, the Halloween pinup Twilight Night, which this one Skip this one this one Pass. recently saw a reprint. Pass. Pass. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This uh, one's upsetting. So it was originally released. It was a recipe gear. So you turn the back card over, over it, have like a recipe on it. You could make it if you wanted. Um, um, and then it was just reprinted last Halloween. But then when people got it, it, so it was reprinted as a pattern, a seed pattern gear. And then when people no received card. it, they there was no seed pattern card. So it's like we have this gear card that we technically can't even craft at the moment um so that's going to be interesting if we see that in the next you know october or whatever but um yeah kind of disappointing 
spooky seasons coming up. I agree. So maybe. I agree. What's scarier than not having a card included in your pack? Now, this one, though... Pumpkin monsters. Uh, this one is interesting, though, because this was based on fan art, right? This is that one? The one that was based on the fan art? Jack Lantern? No, no, the the mini, the, the Halloween Twilight mini. Wasn't this based on a fan art of a, someone did a Halloween flower night or something? A pumpkin night? Uh, I remember the Halloween flower night, but I don't remember the person in it. Um, it was then not the uh, Halloween white speaker. Oh, was that the Halloween white speaker? Okay. One of them, I think, was based on a fan art, which is neat. That's cool. But yes, cannot agree more. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this one includes incomplete stuff and i would avoid buying something incomplete so the next we have halloween white speaker again this is a newer one with a newer scale and this also includes uh the old patterns this is the insight not the seed patterns yeah so this one loses points for me just because it's not a seed pattern card i like you know working on the tabletop simulator stuff really illuminated like how many iterations pattern card development has gone through like over the years that we've been receiving them as um, content basically um so yeah basically i i would wait i have a feeling that these kind of cards are going to get re-released at some point as a seed pattern like with the appropriate back uh the appropriate keywords so if that happens, I would wait for it. If it's released, you know, next time it's printed, if it has those cards in it, that's great. Um, yeah, this one was also kind of problematic because it uses a icon. Uh, it's like a jack-o'-lantern icon, pumpkin icon. So this yeah. card uh, gains sharp when attacking pumpkin monsters. But we have not seen, since this was released, I believe, in like 2000, maybe 19, uh, yeah, something like that. We haven't seen any any inkling of what a pumpkin monster may be. Uh, so TBD on that. Um, one of the other things that people really didn't like about this miniature is it has a new rule or a new kind of... Uh, oh, I guess you could just say rule. It was never defined, so when I was doing the wiki, like I just called it a black one because um, there's never any kind of information given to it but it was like an extension to the um attack profile of the black ghost dagger and it's like just a number one and when you flip the card over that's when it gives you more information on uh, what that value does so it's not really super um intuitive nice to play with yeah it's not very like convenient you know um so if they do do a reprint it'd be interesting to see them maybe try that in a different way or address that in a different way. I agree. Yeah, this is one that will likely maybe get more reprints seasonally, maybe. Um, I Yeah, I think it'll get reprinted. The model definitely will be reprinted. It's just, um, I think the cards will, will be released in a different form. I agree. I think this one is likely to see reprinted, but I would not chase this one down on third party or whatever i would wait for reprints um next we have the halloween flower night costume uh oh wait, well one thing i do want to say about the blast ghost dagger the pattern cards are really like thematic and i love the black ghost dagger it's one of my favorite ones thematic wise for um yeah how to how to actually create that but I agree, yeah. and it, it's nice that it has like nice or it has interesting, um, like keywords. So, for seed pattern cards, you build your seed pattern deck at the beginning of your campaign based on the, the monsters or the game components that you have in your in your game. So the Black Ghost Dagger requires you to have Be Dung Beetle Knight and Slender Man in your campaign. So it's like kind of a very interesting combination that you need to have in your in in your in your game in order to even get this pattern right so mm -hmm. um yeah so i agree i agree i we kind of overlooked the um the niceness of pattern cards in general i suppose like they're they're, they're oh, a cool idea pattern cards not lame pattern, pattern cards, cards yeah we'll, we'll uh, get to 
<laughs> yeah, we'll get to other panic cards. Um, so yeah, you're you're right. There are there are good things about this content. It's just that some of the stuff overshadows it. Uh, so next we have the flower costume. So this is the Halloween flower night. Uh, this was a single release. This wasn't part of the Halloween bundles. Usually there are Halloween bundles. This was a single release costume. Uh, this is a, this is an actual seed one. So this will have the the orange back. Uh, this is the costumes are always like very gimmicky. So your actual gameplay use of these will vary, but uh, they're usually pretty interesting. Uh, they are what they are. The flower, the costumes are cool though. I will say all the costumes, pretty much forever, even the original costumes that came with no content, where they were like the old Universal monsters. I think they were like Frankenstein and Dracula. But yeah, I kind of wish they had content with those. Yeah, uh, that would have been fun. They could do negative patterns on those; would be um, uh, funny to see. But the even the role survivors that come with Lion Knight. Uh, the costumes always are, they're always fun. They're always fun to paint and stuff, so they're always neat. The, these are these are um, just neat. I'd say if you really enjoyed these, like, just having the costumes, they're very unique. They're they're never going to be, like, a, like a, a substitute for, like, you're never going to get a substitute for this. You know what I mean? Like, with uh, yeah. Twilight Knights, there's there are always going to be more Twilight Knight minis you can use, but, you know. With a flower costume mini for your survivor, there's never going to be a substitute for that, and it's just fun. So I, I all these costumes, I'm just going to say they're all very neat. So if you really enjoy them, they're they're very cool. I'm hoping we get um, uh, new ones this year for uh, Frog Dog, the King, and Smog Stalker. Yeah, I you know these are fun. These are just these are ones that are just neat. Uh, regardless of what the, the stuff does, uh, these are very enjoyable. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, what monster would I like to see the most for a costume for this year? I think a Slender Man costume would be pretty funny. Yeah. That'd be neat. That'd be neat. <laughs> uh, I don't... Um, I think these... This individual... I bet the Flower Knight costume probably is going to go up for sale again. Like, I don't know if it'll be reprinted, but I don't know if they sell out of them. So maybe we'll see it again on Halloween. Yeah, I, th I think we're going to see this and the Series 2 Halloween Survivors, which we'll get yeah, to probably this, we'll... this year. Yep. Plus probably a new one this year, I imagine. Hopefully. Next. Smog Singer costume. Smog as possible, but I th I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Frog Dog. Yeah. Uh, next... We have the newest one, the newest white box. Well, one of the two newest white boxes. They're both. We're going to talk about both of them back to back here. We just talked about them, not even like two or three weeks ago. So we don't really need to cover these too much. Uh, but that's Indominal Survivor, Longclaw, and Lenore, and Loon. Again, the last video, we just talked about these. Uh, these are both very neat, very cool sculpts. Uh, both of them are... Loon's actually a reprint of an old brown box. Was that right? Yeah, that's right. So... She never had any content when she was originally released, and it was in, just in resin. Yep. Uh, so yeah, she got re-released with a character card called the Gaty, and uh, that's kind of a, a pillar, I guess, that was introduced in Gambler's Chess expansion. And then Longclaw Lenore... She was really, she comes with an indomitable resource, which is a new resource type also introduced in the gambler's chest, as well as a regular pattern or a lame pattern, as uh, Jay says. And well, they a, are. Uh, <laughs> and a pattern gear card. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we just talked about those very good white boxes. Well, I think those ones are, I think Lenore's still for sale. Loon might still be for sale too, even. Uh, next. Yes, I believe yeah, everything's still available, or most of the stuff from Gen Con sales. Yes, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If Lenore had like a cape or some shoulder pads or something, she'd be like ten times better. I'm just saying. I just I wish Loon had another card, like yeah, like something. came with I don't know like, a lantern gold gown or her headband or whatever. I don't know um, something from her character, just something to. Just give it a little more oomph. But I love Loon's sculpt, actually. The miniature is excellent. But, uh, yeah. 
as somebody who like craves content, I guess I, I would have loved to have uh, some some little little give me give me a little something more. Just give me just give me like just give me a little something else, you know? A little, a little treat. A little treat. Give yeah. A little treat. Well, yeah. That's that's one of the things, right? Because we talked to how to divide up this list and stuff. Um. Yeah. <laughs> They vary wildly in the amount of stuff that you get in some of these boxes. Some you get one card, some you get seven. So, um, let's go with Percival. So Percival's next. Percival's the one of the OGs as well. Um, Percival is actually getting a full-blown reprint guaranteed. She is guaranteed a reprint. Uh, even before that was confirmed at Gen Con this year, when I asked uh, Poots about Fade and Percival and stuff about getting reprints for their expansions, Percival will get a reprint of some kind because she is included in all those Percival lanterns, and I think she's included in all the bla- the de- or the blackest bundles. So she is getting something, whether it's the same exact one or something. You might even have her if you if you back the Percival Lantern at the Kickstarter. You might even have her. You might even have her if you got the Blackest Bundle from 2022, I think it was, Percival was in there. So, um, she's got cool stuff. She's got a lot of lore behind her. She includes a basic hunt event and a secret fighting art. She's just lots of cool stuff. I fully expect she'll get a reprint. Guaranteed to get one. And then maybe it will be something different. So this is a... I wouldn't chase down this. Her sculpt's really cool, but again, it's going to be in a smaller scale as well. I think, again, depending on how... Like, you know, if... She's... Got new content or, like, new versions of this content, that's great. But if it's something like we're going to get a new version of Percival and maybe the content changes or you know, along those lines, this would be nice for these cards to end up in a card pack as well. Um, yep. Not that they're particularly like the best white box cards available. I know there's a lot of contention around black guard style as a secret fighting art. And um, dead warrior is kind of, you know, risky as far as hunt events go. Yep. So, So that's pretty much it for Percival. <laughs> She's definitely going to get more content. I wouldn't worry about too much about her. I wouldn't chase it down. So next, we have the Pinup Easter Twilight Night. So Pinup Easter Twilight Night. This I don't think has seen a reprint, and it's quite old now. Well, not old, but what does it have th- four four Easters? We've got we've had three, no four Easters, yeah, I think right? It was- Probably 2018 um, that this this mini came out, I believe. Probably yeah. around there, 2017, 2018. Yeah. So, and she uh, never saw reprint in any of those. So, just for anybody watching, Jay just dropped out of the conversation. So it's just the two of us now. But um, yeah, this card. Well, this mini came with a new vermin card, which is the Gibbering and Heramite. Um, I personally love Haramites. Like I, I just like when even the mini for it. I, I just love how much character they have. I, I want to see them more in the game. The card itself is like kind of painful to add to your vermin resource deck just because of the effects of the the, the Haramite. Um, but I'm I'm all for it. My one criticism of this card though is that the cards are printed oversized. Um, yes. So like, when I was trying to sleeve this card, my card actually got bent because it was so tight in the sleeve. Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind if you don't have this as content and you're, you're looking to buy it, is that you might have to trim these cards down a little bit or just be c- cognizant of the idea that they're 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 larger than they, sh- they should be. Um, so, yeah, be careful. Yeah. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Yeah, this card also needs a Rada. But we know what that is, so it's okay. <laughs> what cards don't need her out at this point, though? Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting card. <laughs> this is an interesting white box. Uh, 
Again, this is one unlikely to see, re maybe it will see a reprint. I think this is, I'm going to classify this as unlikely because we've had three, e four Easters now where it, they've had new releases. So. I don't really see any reason why it would stop being printed. Like, it's like a fun holiday model. And I think they get lots of those holiday models and then like just keep carrying them over to the next year, right? So if they didn't sell out, I'm assuming we're going to see continue to see them yeah maybe uh i wouldn't chase this one down but um i mean just for the sake of like adding more variety to the vermin resource deck which is the smallest deck i believe of cards in kingdom death um it's worth getting just just to kind of give yourself that uh, is if you don't have the other one we'll talk about that can add variety to the vermin deck that's much better yeah well <laughs> Yeah, but that's like a harder, a much harder. Uh, this one you just throw in your deck and you call it a day, you know. That one, that yeah. one's got a little bit more work you got to put into it. So that is the pin of Twilight Knight. Next, we have Ringtail Vixen, which is. Uh, has seen reprints, I think. Uh, this yeah, is. I believe there's a reprint pretty recently. Yeah. And it was like the newer scale of model as well. Yeah. And it still had this the bookmark in it, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, the bookmark's awesome. I love I love the bookmark. I remember when this first came out, I was like, oh man, I, my mind was blown. Like I was like, a bookmark, like that's so ingenious of a way to introduce rules to a, a board game. I uh, agree. Yeah, so that was I was really impressed, and I'm actually surprised we haven't seen additional bookmarks. I also agree. Uh, I think this. But one there's also. It's. I think it's easy to overdo it, though. That's the problem, right? It's like you can't uh, just have like thirty bookmarks in your rule book. I think they pick the per. Yeah. If you were gonna pick an, an event to have a bookmark, I think it's this one or like hunt events. The the fact that it's on intimacy, one that you see, this is the perfect one to do it on. So, yeah, I I would like to remind players if you are using this, uh, there is a rule at the top of the bookmark. I know I've I've skipped this one a couple of times, but we do need to. Uh, Oh, sorry. It's the it's a, the clause at the bottom of the bookmark. You got to roll to get this bookmark back in your game. Correct. So, don't cheat. Yeah, the best type of content, the kind that eliminates itself from ever being used ever again when you roll less than a six. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but so yeah, yes. this mini. This is the only piece of this is besides the miniature. Like it only came with this bookmark, so it's a little little sparse there but again i, I just I sure just... i think this bookmark is is great i think this bookmark is really good this is a very cool bookmark it's very thematic it actually kind of makes it, it's like a proto wanderer right because you're, you're literally getting yeah, almost, yeah. you're getting the mini that's in the box yeah tbd yeah maybe i mean like if we could see additional content in the future that might have ringtail vixen like as a wanderer who knows yeah that's probably not true i wouldn't really put a lot of money into that but no but i'm just saying um it's neat that it gives you the action like it it, it explains that the mini you're buying is going to be the mini that you're going to use to play like you, it gives you a purpose to use that specific mini yeah i think that's really neat um and it also saves your ass on a one roll of, it does uh, Missy, so that's that's a very uh yep. very welcome change to the intimacy rules yep. at least the moment of change and it, it helps you when you need it too because uh you'll probably trigger this before you get like your double rolls right this will be you'll probably trigger this usually maybe not always but if you don't have your uh settlement new life principle this will probably help you get it so you're not wasting an entire year not having it so it's great. This is good. Uh, I enjoy this one. Uh, I think it will, it might be reprinted. There's its history of getting reprinted, so I think it's good. Uh, next, we have Skrell. Um, we did a video on Skrell. Skrell is the best. Skrell is amazing. Uh, do you have anything you want to say about Skrell? I know Jay and I talked about Skrell and how amazing Skrell is. I, I wasn't there for Skrell, but I, I kind of, um, like one, okay, I love the artwork on the settlement event, but I kind of sleep on Skrell a little bit. 
What do you mean? You don't you don't think uh, you don't like the fig tree? Well, in real life, I don't really like figs that much. Oh, okay. they kind of creep. They kind of creep me out. Like as far as like a, a tree or a fruit to pick in in uh, Kingdom Death, I think figs are a fitting choice because if you if you aren't familiar, you should you should YouTube uh, fig wasps and learn about the wonderful life cycle of the fig tree. But um, overall, like you know, it's it's nice that you get a tree or whatnot. But um, yeah, I there's in the context of this video, I Skrell is not in my top three. All right, uh, I've talked at length about Skrell. I think Skrell is the epitome of white boxes. It's the best. It's what all white boxes should strive to be. I think Skrell is amazing. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, I'll say it again here, just so you don't have to go back and watch your Skrull video. The specific reason why I like Skrell is, one, she's a very niche sculpt. She's a harvester. She's got, like, a sickle. So, like, she's not, a like, a, a fighting survivor, which is very niche. She subs for the scout now. She's a great scout mini. Uh, this is a settlement event, which is rare for white boxes. This settlement event doesn't remove itself from future campaigns, so you'll use it forever. Settlement event is permanently in your settlement event deck. It's not limited to some quarry or restricted to some innovation or something. Well, it is. it has pictographs. Pictographs is always in every single settlement anyway, but uh, then it's a science endeavor. It gives you a survival limit. It's very thematic because it has consume, so you actually need to be able to consume to benefit from the departing survival. The It's a double-sided innovation where it tells a story, I think Skrill is great. <laughs> so, I think Skrill is obviously my favorite white box. But uh, Next, we have Swashbuckler. This is an interesting one. Uh, Sw uh, yeah, so I can, I can talk about it. Yeah, it's fine. I, actually, I don't know if you noticed, but you're looking at the same image I'm looking at. Uh, does it say... When it's I never knew it was a savior. <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, that's so this is a I, lot harder to get than I thought. Yeah, and the Theriel is kind of a rough a rough rule to begin with, so um anyways, Corsair Coat is a rare gear card. It was included in the generic swashbuckler mini. This is like a kind of a unique mini because it was it's the only non Kingdom Death monster mini, like ex like the uh, taking into account like death high or other generic minis to have uh, kingdom death content in it. So it has some pretty interesting lore um, implications, I suppose. But anyway, so you get a single card with it, a single rare gear card, or you gain it when a, a savior shares a well-told dream during weird dream and you add it to the settlement storage. Weird dream is already kind of a strange settlement event in general. Um, but the Corsair Coat is unique in the sense that it is able to attack on its own. Like, it has its own attack profile when you complete the affinities um, with some guns. Um, it's it's a strange gear. Uh, Bra and I have uh, asked tasting notes about it in the past just because of kind of how the rules are written. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting in the sense that it has those lore implications that I mentioned. Yep, very interesting. It's very neat. Uh, I never realized this had to be done specifically for a savior, but this is super cool. Very neat. Uh, I actually like the the mini too, the Swashbuckler mini. She looks cool. I think it's yeah. Unique. The a lot of the generic miniatures are really nice, but like for lore. Purism, I can't use them in game. Oh games. yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're very niche. But again, like the costumes, I think, I think that. Oh yeah, people who paint. And yeah. People who like. To I think this is one like where it's a very unique thing, right? And if you're if you're out for the Kingdom Death minis themselves, or the Kingdom Death line of minis, because the Kingdom Death makes great minis, right? And this is such a niche one where it's like a pirate, right? So you're only probably going to see the one very, very, very few opportunities to ever chase down a Kingdom Death pirate mini. So. I could see yeah. chasing this if you wanted it. I doubt this will get a reprint. 
next we have oh OG white speaker. So this is a weird sculpt too. This is going to be in a small scale. It's also got that weird pedestal that she's standing on with her like her spear leaning against her. You've seen the sculpt, right? Yeah, of course. I own the sculpt. Yeah, it's kind of oh okay. I don't I don't it, actually own this. It is a. It's yeah, a, I have. Uh, I think I have everything on this page. Everything that we've talked about so far, except the new jack o' lantern, I believe. Yeah, that, so that's a very. Did you did you build it? It looks very weird to me. You just kind of just um, glue the sculpt. It's, it's so it's so old though, right? Like yeah. that's one of like the the first Kingdom Death sculpts. Yeah, um, just has that like pedestal she stands on. I think you yeah. literally just glue her staff to her, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, I do like her content though. So she has a sticker that you add to your white speaker uh, yeah. settlement events. It's in one point six. We didn't really mention that with the Alice in the Twilight Night, but she also comes with a um, sticker that you add that adjusts the uh, hooded knight uh, story event. So. Yeah, it allow, uh, basically allows you to trade and craft some gear, or I guess trade for yeah. some gear. Uh, One of the best gears good. ever. Speaker. Yeah, speaker cult knife has fist and tooth, so it's a very good fist and tooth weapon if you're a fist and tooth specialist or fist and tooth master. Yep, it's also a dagger. Yes, so it's two for one. Yep, it's really good. And it's also in the 1.6 card pack. Yeah, so again, like just like Alice in Twilight Night, we don't really recommend people hunt this down just because it's easier, it's cheaper, and you kind of get more for your dollar if you just buy the 1.6 card pack just to get this content. Yep. Now, uh, well, I guess in the back of the variant, we'll, we'll just throw this out there for fun. There is a variant in the back of the gambler's chest now where the variant in the original core game was you could play as a Twilight Knight, and I always used Allison. In the back of the Gambler's Chest, there's a variant where you can play as a White Speaker. So, uh, of all the White Speakers, which one would you recommend? 10th Anniversary? If you really wanted to seek one white box out to, so you could play that variant, which would you get? Um, Sword Hunter. That's the one I was about to say too. <laughs> this is the one I would yeah. seek out too. That's why I brought it up. So this is the if you want if you want to know which white speaker we both recommend you play as, I would get this one. So let's talk about white speaker Sword Hunter. Uh, I love white speaker Sword Hunter. Very cool. Uh, this has the settlement event, would, which is would now would now have that like red stop sign on it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that would have that if it was reprinted. Yep. And this, have that if it's reprinted. this has been reprinted, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know if the card will get reprinted in a different state, but um, but yeah, it is that idea. Like, you know, what what we're talking about, just for more context, I guess, because we're not really being super clear, yeah. is that in the Gambler's Chest, there's a new symbol that's used. It's like a hexagon with a stop hand in the middle of it, and that's basically on any card that isn't added directly to the deck as soon as you get it. It's like it has some kind of condition to adding it to the deck. So Sword Hunter's Settlement Event is the same way that you're only added to the Settlement Event deck when instructed. And so if it were to get reprinted, it should have that icon. But yeah. will it get reprinted? Will it have that icon? We'll yeah. find out next time. We'll never know. But this has been reprinted once before. Uh, originally, she was a brown box and she had no white speaker mask on. Then she became a white box. And they put the white speaker ma little like eye guard on her. Very neat. It's a very cool little thing. Just a little bit of information about the reprints. Yeah, I love the basic hunt event. I think I haven't. I actually haven't gotten Excalibur in a game yet, but I would be interested in trying it out. Um, yep. The rules are very interesting on the Excalibur gear card, and the Sword Hunter card um, settlement event is like. Kind of brutal, but um, kind of like in a funny way, I suppose. Uh, just that she can take a lot of your gear, or she can take very like special sword gear that you might have in your settlement, and just she just leaves. And it's not even it's not even sword. It's like uh, twilight swords, katanas, scimitars. Yep. Uh, cleavers. Yeah. May who knows? Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll see. 
Maybe, yeah. So, uh, um, and then basically for each sword, each blade, I suppose that you have in your um, your settlement, you you roll one d10, and she can just take them if you roll poorly. So you could just lose so much gear um, and do nothing about it. Yep. But it's kind of like one of those moments in game where, like, say if you rolled like three ones in a row, you'd be like, oh, like did that seriously just happen? Yep, uh, and it's not even easy to put into the deck, uh, mostly because sword specialization, not one of the better ones, so you don't usually chase sword specialization, and it's hard to roll a 10+, plus if you don't have it. <laughs> so, um, that's you'd have to do the basic hunt event to get this first, and then put the, the sword hunter in, but super cool. I think it's really neat. I think Sword Hunter is one of the better ones. That's that's like a that's a good gate a gate for uh, for adding Sword Hunter though, you know, because it is mm -hmm. kind of on, on the more brutal side. So it is nice that it's gated kind of in a I agree specific way. I wonder if novel sword proficiency would apply to that roll result though. Uh, it would not, because it's its mm -hmm. own thing. Rip. Yep. Uh, last one for the under thirty one dollars. USD, we have White Sunlion Armor, which was originally a beta content, and then got upgraded to White Box. Uh, white Sunlion Armor is restricted to People of the Sun. Which is interesting. Not, technically not, actually, though. Because I did ask Taste about that as well. But, um, yeah, this is the first, this is the first beta content to be turned into a white box yes um so it's it's kind of like set the standard for what beta content can become so i'm interested to see what will be the next what will be the next uh what will be the next uh <laughs> beta content made into a white box um yeah so i'll i'll, I'll explain more about what i said well, you can just go ahead and explain, because how how did how would you get this without getting uh, this being in People of the Sun? I asked if, because in a... Oh, the uh, flower run. You're right. Yes, in a Bloom People campaign, which is in the Flower Knight camp, uh, expansion, you can do a forest run, which allows you to draw a random flower resource. So flower resources before were specifically limited to flower knight monster resources but because the bleeding corpse lily has the flower keyword it technically has the potential to be drawn so i asked it can you include that when you're randomly drawing and taste said yes so you can hypothetically unlock uh the beast kunai and the white sunline mask outside of a people of the sun campaign yes you're correct I do remember the flower one question. Um, it's a perfect flower. <laughs> yes. And organ. Uh, so let's talk. This, this has so much stuff in it. Like this. Is, yeah, this 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 to me is like the top tier of, of white box content. Yes. So I of, uh, of like under thirty one dollar white box. content. Yes, I, I agree that but this as, is my number two. Has a hybrid armor set. It has two uh, regular pattern cards. It has two pattern gear cards. It has a terrain card, it has a terrain tile, and it has a strange resource. It's just so much content, plus a nice miniature. Um, and this is this is really like a, like, if I'm going to be honest, based on the standards of Kingdom Death stuff, like, they we underpaid for this content. Like, this should have been in the over $31 category. Well, But I'm glad it's in the under $31 category because I, I love... I well, love that this I remember, we're doing under 31 right? Yeah. So, some of the things... Like, Skrell is 25 So, like, under... It's not, it means everything's 31 There's, there's So, you have a range of, of 25 is usually the lowest, but uh, Sun Lion armor is 30 That's why I did 31 so she's not the same price. She's 30, which is higher than the other white But boxes. I mean, like, it, just, the, just the content you get is... is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I agree. So she, But she is not the 25 to 27, which is the normal white box. She is 30. That's okay. Yeah. So, she, so the 
the cost was increased a little bit, but I agree with you 100% that this is this this and Skrell, like the amount of stuff you're getting should be the standard. Should be like more than uh, one card. Yeah, I mean, there are some drawbacks about this content as well. Like, do I wish that White Sunland armor was available outside of, uh, for the most part, outside of People of the Sun? Yes, that'd be that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. um, just having more variety in armor sets is always kind of a nice thing. And, this is this uh, is what I was talking White, about with Skrell. Skrell's literally tied to nothing, which is great. Yeah, White White Lion armor could use some help sometimes. So this would be, uh, I agree, like a nice way to kind of up some of that content um there this was is... some contention when this content came out because of beast kunai being a dagger but also not a weapon and then white sun lion mask being an armor but also an accessory those were kind of strange special rule keyword kind of uh instances that we'd never seen before so that was something that had been discussed um, yeah. And then the other thing that kind of stood out was that the corpse lily terrain tile, the one that they provided, was a little, a little bit bigger than a typical one by one terrain tile. Um, so, if that kind of thing bothers you, it would probably be kind of off putting. Yep, I mean, very good. These these, so those are all under thirty one. Uh, that we included, at least that met our restrictions, because there are other white boxes out there that exist that don't come with content and stuff like that, that are that are completely promo, that w have no ways of incorporating them into the game whatsoever. We talked about that, but so these are the ones. So of these, what is there like fifteen? Nineteen of them. Which, if you could, if you recommended three, which ones would you recommend? My top three recommendations are uh, the White Sun Lion Urza. Because it just has so much content. It's just such, such a good bang for your buck. Um, Ringtail Vixen, because I love the bookmark. I think it is an excellent way to kind of protect yourself from early game intimacy, <laughs> like losses. Which can always be pretty brutal. Um, and my last recommendation is Long Claw Lenore, uh, because I think Indomitable Resources are kind of going to be a core part of the game moving forward, and it helps to update uh, the White Lion, which you know everybody's kind of probably sick of fighting by this point in time, but it kind of gives you a reason to to keep using that or to experiment or experience those indomitable resource kind of um rules i suppose uh if you don't have the game uh, the gambler's chest or stuff like that so yeah those are my three recommendations what would be your number four my number four would probably be oh well, that's taught your 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 all right well I, okay you come up with stuff off the top of my head i probably no, pick my me... number four right now is off the top of my head is tied between sword hunter skrell and 10th anniversary white speaker uh, all right, I knew probably sword sword hunter. I this is sword hunter. To. All right, then we then yeah. yes, then our top four, your top three, and my top three make the top four. That's it. Mine would have been Skrell, but then I'm also suggesting Lenore, uh, and uh, Sun Lion, and then mine would have been Sword Hunter. And what would what would Jay recommend if he was here? He'd Jay like... would definitely recommend Lenore and Skrell. I do know that because um but jay's been with me for much all the reviews jay would probably recommend skrell because i know we both we both pushed hard for skrell he also likes skrell because of the artwork reminds him of urza i remember he said that but it's not urza <laughs> jay's got a jay's got a comment in in the comments yeah you can, pin, you can pin his comment on his i'll pin it his top three yeah but yes so th that's it those are the four yep so mine would just be skrell then plus uh lenore and sun lion and then I would have also recommended Sword Hunter as my number four. Well, bra, those were some great recommendations on on under thirty one US dollar white box content. Now, if you hang tight, we're getting ready to talk about over thirty one dollar US dollar white content. Yes, totally robotic ending to this video. We'll see you in part two. <laughs>